Let's now take a look at what the course is going to be all about. So we are, this course is called Exploratory Data Analysis and Data Visualization. Right? So here what I've got tried to put together is just what data files really look like. That's what data is. Right? Just a bunch of rows and columns and all kinds of information which is there. In Exploratory Data Analysis, what we are really trying to do is to get an idea of the information contained in a data set in summary form and most of the time we want to be able to visualize this information right so we want to unearth patterns which are not at all obvious when you look at the data set by itself right so that's the whole idea of exploratory data analysis you want to look at underlying patterns look for patterns and visualize the data in such a way that the data starts talking to us so uh, what we really want students to be able to do at the end of this course is to be able to ask relevant questions right so you understand a certain business situation you've got a data set you should be able to ask questions and then use those questions to drive your data exploration and of course we want to be uh, people to be able to apply the correct analysis techniques for data analysis and we also want people to be able to communicate their findings effectively and all of this happening in the context of business right we don't want to forget the fact that all of this be is being done in the service of business you want to reduce costs you want to increase profit you want to increase the service levels you want to improve quality so it is in the service of these things that we are doing data analysis in the first place right so it's not only necessary or it's not only enough for us to be able to apply certain techniques and get some results but we want to be able to connect all that and see what the business implications of those things are right at the outset I want to set out a caveat because you're learning a new tool and sometimes what happens is especially when you're learning a tool uh, when you're in the early stages of learning a tool it's pretty complicated you know there are so many moving parts to the tool you do all these things you write this piece of code and many times in the beginning you really don't fully understand what's going on so then what happens is we start falling into a kind of a practice of simply accepting whatever correct whatever results we may get as meaningful see sometimes what will happen is you may do something wrong and the computer is still going to give you some output okay it's not as if every time you do something wrong the computer is going to come back and tell you what what you did is wrong because the computer doesn't know your intentions it's only executing code right so we have to be extremely careful to uh, not fall into the trap of assuming that just because it came from a computer that it's correct and it's meaningful and so on we always have to have our skeptical hat on to see does this make sense okay and then be ready to revise whatever code we wrote to get our analysis okay so that is a very very important uh, attitude that we need to develop and not just accept that okay the computer said it it has to be right so that is something we have to understand and always be skeptical always double check what we have done and always check our results for sanity so the weekly workflow for the course is going to be like this so obviously you understand that just like in uh, the first course we'll post the materials on Monday okay and initially what you want to do between Monday and Wednesday is uh, study the course materials that is watch all the videos do all the uh, review questions or check questions and uh, discuss actively and participate in teams discussions about the subject matter okay so that's really what you should be doing in the first uh, three days of the week in preparation for our Thursday recitation session so at this point uh, obviously if there are any clarifications on any of the topics discussed and so on it'll be a good idea for you to post on teams so that the instructor can make a note of this and uh, discuss important points on Thursday okay so that's very important communicate with the instructors and with your uh, classmates colleagues and so on on points that you require clarification on so on Thursday of course we are going to have our synchronous class uh, uh, the Thursday evening sessions the recitation sessions so of course those recitation sessions as you already understand will not be rehashing the course material because that's already discussed in the videos and we assume that you have gone through it and that you have communicated our, your concerns and uh, that's what the Thursday session will be dealing with it will be looking at 
uh, important aspects of the uh, of your questions any doubts that you may have plus the sessions may tend to uh, try to raise certain other points to discuss maybe amplify and so on and of course uh, I may also devote time during those sessions to un assess your understanding so it's quite possible that these Thursday sessions may begin with a few questions for you to answer of course those won't be questions uh, directly coming out from the lectures but may be talking about some deeper aspects and finally of course it's going to provide clarifications for everything so that's our Thursday recitation session and then after that of course the rest of the week you're going to spend uh, reviewing the course material and completing the assignments etc and also now that we have started on the project capstone project always look at any new course material that we have looked at in the context of your project right so maybe you already have some project data try to apply some of these things to our project data to your project data and so on okay so that's what the weekly workflow for the course is going to look like let's now discuss the bane of all students assignments so my policy on the weekly assignments and review questions the check questions or review questions my policy is as follows so the first thing I would always suggest is stay on top submit everything on time okay once again I remind you the assignments and the check and review questions are there to help you to benefit you so it's not some chore for the instructor uh, to simply impose on the students it is that when you learn new material you listen to the lecture you understand something but unless it's properly reinforced you're not going to really be able to gauge whether you understood something and also if you did understand it to strengthen that understanding that is the sole purpose of the review questions and assignments and therefore when the course is progressing week to week and this course will rapidly escalate uh, you know if you miss a couple of weeks of material then you're going to be constantly struggling to catch up I don't want that to happen the main bent, uh, goal here is that you get something of value there's really no other objective here you get something of value and therefore I want to do everything in my power to make sure that you stay on top of the material week to week okay I understand that it's difficult with your full work schedule and so on but you've signed on for the course and there's really nothing that can be done the point is that if you put in all the effort you're going to get something worthwhile that's all I can say okay so stay on top as far as possible submit everything on time that is designed for your benefit okay the second thing is I understand that you're working uh, you know working on the course side by side with a full-time job I understand that and therefore I am allowing a blanket certain amount of late submissions okay without any prior permission you don't have to ask me nothing so there are going to be 13 weekly assignments out of those 13 weekly assignments I am saying up front you're allowed to submit two of those assignments late okay how late I'm not even specifying that just submit them late whenever you can but of course as I've already pointed out it is in your best interest to submit the assignments on time or at least to complete them as soon as possible after the due date okay so I'm saying without prior permission you're allowed to submit two weekly assignments late you don't need to ask me nothing just submit them okay and also of course you already understand that uh, the material for every week is going to be broken up into several short videos and you've grown accustomed that at the end of each of these videos you're going to have some review questions okay so there might be five sets of review questions every week it could be five it could be four it could be eight depending on the content of that particular week you could have several sets of review questions so the videos are going to be broken up into let's say 10 minute or 15 minute segments at the end of almost every segment of video you'll have a set of questions it might be you know five questions or ten questions or whatever so sim like that you can expect that every week there will be five to eight such sets of questions right so and of course when you consider 13 weeks of material you're going to have uh, you know 70 such sets of questions to answer I'm giving you a blanket allowance to submit 10 of those sets late 
right? Of course, don't assume that 10 weeks you can submit late. No, 10 sets. So over the 13 weeks of course material, you'll have about 65 to 70 such sets of check and review questions. I'm saying 10 of those you can submit late without any prior permission. Okay, so I'm setting this up up front because uh, I don't want to go through lengthy v email exchanges for you to ask, get me permission, do all of these things. It's not required. Uh, but again, I would say keep track of your own late submissions and on-time submissions. Please don't ask me, right? Because that's going to take a lot of time and effort for me to go and look through all of these things and check how many you have submitted on time, how many you have submitted on late. I would say that's your responsibility. You keep track of it and use this allowance wisely, okay? I really don't want us to be spending a lot of time on this administrative matter, okay? So that's a very important thing uh, about weekly assignments, okay? So you manage your assignments. Here are your limits. This is your currency to spend, okay? So again, some more policies on assignments. First of all, as with the prior course, you get full credit for assignments and check questions just for a timely submission of a decent attempt. Okay, so you don't need to get all the questions correct. You can make some mistakes. That's fully expected because doing these review questions and doing assignments is part of the learning process. There will be challenging questions and I expect that you will make mistakes. In fact, if you don't make any mistakes, then there's a problem, right? Because I would not have challenged you enough so you should expect challenging questions and you should fully expect to make mistakes. Therefore, for decent attempts, you will get full credits, credit. Okay, so which means that, let's say for check questions, I assign 10% of the grade and for weekly assignments, I assign 10% of the grade, right? If you've submitted all of them on time or, you know, with the late submissions that I'm allowing, if you have stayed within the limits, then you will get the 10 plus 10, 20 points for assignments. Okay, so there's no problem there. Uh, the second point is that if you do have late submissions which are beyond the above limits, right? So up to two assignments and up to 10 sets of check questions, you'll still be able to get full credit. If you go beyond that, then you lose one point per weekly assignment or one fifth of a point per set of check or review questions okay so once again uh, my intent is really not to be quibbling and taking away points from students that's something I really don't like to do but the point is that there has to be some pressure maintained for you to stay on top of the course material I don't want you to get lax and fall behind on course material and I think a little bit of pressure helps okay because after all you're doing this course alongside a full-time job and you need some kind of pressure to keep you on on task. Otherwise, it's very easy to just fall behind uh, with a lot of work. And this course is going to be like the previous course. This course is going to be quite intense and there's no way around it because you're learning something useful. Uh, it's going to be hard. Okay, so these are the policies. Please remember them. I'll maybe post these policies as well on Blackboard. Okay, so uh, keep these in mind as you work through the course.